Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Shenanigans with uh, Brent. Because, you know, holidays and stuff, and Becky has family. I don't have any family in town. The only family I have is Eddie, and he's behind the camera. So, you know, we spend the holidays together. Um, but today we've got a few things we're going to get into. Uh, as you can see, we've got the camera. We've got a little bit different setup with the camera wise today because it's going to be interesting. We're going to get into, I don't know if you saw the uh, thumbnail, the difference between brothers and baby locks. Spoiler alert, there ain't much of one, but we're going to show you the visuals. But before we get into that, we're going to, I just want to cover um, shop news real quick. A couple things we have coming up in the new year. I don't have the details sorted yet. Hopefully I'll have it by next week because next week is the new year. But we do have the um, Riley Blake bench pillow of the month. Brenda's been working on the samples, and these are supposed to be bench pillows, but she's like, you know what, they're cute runners, so some of them are going to end up as runners for the samples, but the idea is they make pillows. I take this back, this is actually a pillow, you can see that she enveloped the back to turn it into a pillow. But this is going to be a month um, similar to the tabletop of the month that we did last year with Riley Blake. They have uh, pre-made kits of um, bench pillows, so this is one of them, and she's, we've got, we're working on getting all the samples done. Here's another one. That one's kind of fun. And here is another one. These are all, every month there's a different one that, that, that's going to come out. Um, it is a sub subscription based. You, you're going to get them all. Um, so if you want one, you got to get them all. That's the way we're working it because we have to. So we have to uh, commit to all of them. So anybody that's interested, um, there's one a month. I got to double check. I want to say it's going to be like 50 bucks a month. Um, I don't have prices yet, but that's, that's June. this is June, but that's um, coming up next year. We'll have the details sorted for that probably in the next couple days. The other thing that we're going to be doing that is um, that I'm looking forward to that's really exciting is we're part of the, uh, what do they call it? Color builder. Anyway, Aurafil Thread does a thing, basically a thread subscription that you can buy, that every month they send you three, three or four spools um, every month of a different color. And then you can choose what kind of thread you're going to get. We are going to be offering the 40 weight uh, cotton for that. So we will be getting the uh, thread builder, thread color builder um, sets from Aurafil, and it's... I, Again, pricing, it's like 40 or 50 bucks a month. I really got to double check it. I don't have all the details. I'm still getting it all sorted. But we are signed up for it, and we will have that. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be really cool. Anybody that likes thread or does a lot of embroidery, we decided with the 40-weight cotton because you're going to get a lot of really cool colors, and you can use that on your embroidery machine. You can also piece with it. A lot of people will still piece with it. But because of the colors, we find that it's a lot more useful to... Um, 40 weight to be more useful because it's also usable with embroidery versus just piecing. You don't need 50 different colors to piece quilts because, you know, if your tension is right, you're never going to see the thread anyway. Anyway, so that's new and ex that's the new stuff coming up for next year as far as classes and products go. The other thing is I just want to go over a calendar real quick. If you've all been kind of paying attention, I've sent out some emails and stuff coming up. But if you look at our online catalog, our online calendar, you'll be noticed, you may have noticed we started filling some stuff up on there. So I'm just going to go over that real quick to get you all excited. The big one that a lot of people are looking forward to, and I'm going to tell you, if you want to do this, sign up today while you're watching this because it's the every time everybody i talk to about this signs up for it and we've only got six seats we may have to run it again but we're doing a lady ladies day out because my mom used to do girls night out and you know ladies sounds better than girls i don't know but ladies day out it's going to be saturday um january 21st and it, we're going to start at nine and probably go through to about three or four it's kind of like a day retreat kind of come hang out and so it'll be a hundred bucks that hundred bucks is going to include your lunch, and we're also going to have a project for the day. Now, the the, the, the project for the day is something you can make you can make here, hang where you're hanging out for the day, or you can just take it home with you and work on your own project when you're here. I do have some people that will come. Uh, some ladies like to come in with this with projects they're working on because with a group sometimes it's really nice to you know get some ideas and some help on some stuff. But the idea is it's a work day mini retreat type thing. Like I said, you will have, we are providing lunch and there is going to be a project, so you don't need to come with anything. We'll have something for you to do, but if you have your own project, feel free to bring it in. Um, again, we have a, uh, we have all the machines here, so you don't need to lug your machine or anything in, just what your project is. So that is coming up on the 21st. That, like I said, if you're interested, sign up for that sooner than later because that's going to fill quick. 
The other thing is Luminaire's Owners Club is also on the schedule for next month. That is going to be uh, Thursday the 26th for those that are retired and for those that have jobs. Saturday the 28th. <laughs> uh, we try to run that twice. That is for if you own a Luminaire, we, we just cover some different stuff. If you check out, I just posted a video late last night or earlier today. Um, applique with your uh, quick applique with your Luminaire. That is just a quick 10 minute video that I threw together. That A lot of that material is what we covered in the last Luminaire's Owners Club. So take a look at that to kind of see some of the stuff we go over and that'll kind of give you a taste for what we're doing um, in the Owners Club. Oh, I forgot to grab the Quilt Smart. The other thing we're doing is a double wedding ring Quilt Smart, which I meant to grab the pattern to show you all, but I forgot. That's something Brenda will be working on. If you're not familiar, Quilt Smart is a fusible interfacing and it's a good technique if you want to do a double wedding ring quilt. We will be doing a class on that on February 11th. You're not going to get the whole quilt done that day. The idea behind the class is to get you started so you know what you're doing. It's a, the technique is great. It's a good way to do a double wedding ring quilt. If you want to do a double wedding ring, this would be a good time, a good, good, uh, good opportunity for that. That's on the 11th. The other one that I put on the calendar, I'm not super excited about it. I'm not, but because I, but because I love you all, I did this for you. We are gonna do a computer basics class on February 16th. Now, if you're asking yourself, do I need to go to this class? Ask yourself this simple question. Do you know the difference between files and directories? If you do, this class is not for you. If you don't, that's the stuff we're going to be covering. We're not going to get into, we're going to be talking more about basic computer concepts and we might do, you know, you're going to want to bring your laptop in if you have one or your iPad or whatever you're working on, but we're going to be talking about basic concepts. We're not going to spend a lot of time doing a lot of like crafty computer stuff. It's basic computer concepts. That's the class. So like I said, if you think you want to take that class, ask yourself the question, do I know the difference between a file and a directory? If you do, you're probably going to be bored with this class. If you don't, this class is for you. So that's on there. It'll be a good time. I do enjoy teaching. It's just the problem with computers. It's such a vast, we have to start somewhere and it's going to be very basic. Um, you can get a lot out of it but we are going to be sticking more to concepts than the how-tos because one of the things that I see a lot when we teach a class, this is kind of a side tangent, but heck, it's my show today, right? Uh, one of the things I see a lot when we teach a class, like I see this in, in the Luminaire's Owners Club, which is fine, is that people are taking step-by-step -step notes. Step one, click this. Step two, click that. Step three, click that. And so you have these step-by-step -step notes, which teaches you the mechanics of what you're doing, whereas our basic computer class, we're going to talk more about the concepts. So rather than talking about step one, step two, step three, we're going to talk about why do you do this? What are we really doing? Because it's more so that when you're looking at your computer, you're not going to be, it's not going to be this how to steps. It's going to be why you do it so that you can kind of work there yourself. That's the idea behind that class. I don't know if that makes any sense what I'm saying, but it's, we're going to be, it's not going to be a, you know, step-by-step -step process. So you can memorize a process. We're going to be talking about the concepts. So you understand why the process happens so that, it's not as important to remember the process because you understand the concepts. Hopefully that makes sense for the teachers out there. I'm sure that does make sense. Um, no, Gene, we are not cooking for Ladies' Day Out. Um, lunch is included in the price, and lunch will be, be provided probably by either Ramontos or Tremont that day. That's, we're a democracy here. We'll probably vote on it. Um, Okay, let me see. I'm just going to check comments real quick. Um, okay, you're all talking to each other. I think, yeah, Quilt Smart is a great project, so the, the Quilt Smart. And then the other, only other thing that, besides all those classes, is we are doing a couple Learn to Quilt classes. I imagine most of the people that are watching this right now probably know how to quilt. Uh, <laughs> but we are going to run a, a couple beginner classes. We have a couple evening sessions set up and a couple afternoon sessions set up. Check our calendar for, uh, calendar for that. So if you have a friend that's interested, you know, go ahead and recommend it because we have a good time. If nothing else, we'll have fun. So that is everything that we've got for news. Did I cover everything? Um, so that's everything for news. And I hope you all had a Merry Christmas. I've been kind of running into this. I've only been talking for 10 minutes. I feel like I'm talking way too fast. Um, so let's get into it. Today we're going to talk about 
baby lock over here, baby lock versus brother. Because as luck would have it, can you do an inset so I'm like in the corner and I'll just go back and forth? Is that doable? Yeah, can so that, you know, they can look at my smiling face at the same time, see what I'm talking about. That's not the one. I don't know. Anyway. So, baby lock over here versus a brother over here. Now, I don't know all the baby lock model names. I'll be the first to admit that. I can tell you, though, that a brother dream machine, this is a brother dream machine, is very similar to a baby lock destiny. You can put it in the bottom left corner because we're going to be looking mostly at the screens and stuff because that's where you see the big differences. And everybody out there says baby lock and brother are the same thing. On the embroidery front, yes, kind of. You have to remember that baby brother does not make all of baby locks machines. Does so I'm going to come right up front and say this, then you have to do your own internet research. My understanding is that Janome does make some of their machines and I believe Juki is making their sergers. But baby lock embroidered machines and some of their sewing machines are made by brother. And I know everybody hears this, but today I just want to show it to you so you can see what we're talking about. So this is a baby lock destiny. And this over here is a brother dream machine. Now right away you're going to notice the big difference is brother is blue. I don't have a lid on this one. Brother is blue and baby lock is gold. So that's like what I always tell people when they ask, like, what's the difference between brother and baby lock? I always tell them brother's blue, baby lock's gold. Now, uh, what you're also going to find on them, and, and to further kind of illustrate this point, what we're going to do is if you take this off, this is just a really good example. Baby lock has a few stylistic differences on the, um, on the plastic, on the shell. But if you look at this, if you just take that off, I mean, we could zoom in and you can really see. Like you'll notice, for example, the button here is shaped a little bit different. All their buttons are a little bit more angled. But look at that assembly there with no plastic on it. It looks identical to this one over here. Look at, oh, sorry, I just picked that. It's, it's, it's practically identical. This motor here, is going to be the same on both of them. This laser assembly is the same on both of them. Everything here, with, when you start taking the plastic off, is the same. It's very, so that's, mechanically speaking, the machines are the same, but the plastic is going to have a few different embellishments depending on which one you buy. So, that settles that. I can, we could, we were, I don't want to take the plastics all the way off because that's a lot of work, but if we were to take this shell off, you would see that it looks no different than a, than a dream machine. Where the differences come, because these are embroidered machines, where you're gonna see your differences is in the software. Right away, you're gonna see the big difference. Um, if I zoom out, if I, I'm, all, I'm, all the way out. I'm all the way out, let me. I'm just gonna rearrange a second so we can actually get both of these on the same screen, which I should have thought of this before, because I was just gonna, hey, we'll go back and forth, but that's getting old quick. Um, that's going to get plugged in, and if we bring that over here a little bit, and that this way a little bit, that way a little bit, can we get them both on the screen at the same time? Eh, almost. Hold on. I should have thought of this before we started, but hey. There we go. You can kind of see it now. So, what we've got here, the big difference between the two is going to be your software. Now, this looks a little smaller than this because it's set further back, but the screens are actually the same size. But you'll notice the Brother Innovus, their software looks a little bit different. The um, buttons are all the same. Sewing, sewing, embroidery, embroidery. My design center is the IQ designer on the baby lock. And the big thing that brother does that baby lock doesn't is Disney. So on your home screen, that's the only difference. Brother does Disney, baby lock does not. No, just watch what happens when I hit sewing. Look at that screen. Can you tell me what the difference between those screens are? <laughs> there isn't one. Those screens are practically identical. In fact, I don't know, I could go through there and see if I could find things that aren't identical. 
but looking at those screens, they're the same screen. The software on the sewing side on these machines is, is identical. There's really no difference. So when you get into a baby lock sewing machine versus a brother sewing machine, you're gonna find it's the same machine, just different colors and different plastic. Um, so that's the sewing side. Where the, you start to see a lot of the differences is gonna be, we're gonna go back to our home screen. Like I said, you don't have Disney on the baby lock, but you're gonna notice that the way the embroidery is done, their, um, their layout's a little different. They've got words. Brother has pictures. I'm not sure. I kind of like the idea of words better because you're going to find, you know, kaleidoscopes. I know what kaleidoscopes look like. Now, what you're also going to find is that all of the, um, what you're going to find is the selection of patterns is different. That is going to be the big difference between these machines is the built-in patterns tend to be a little bit different and their locations are different. Now you'll notice here, they've got some exclusives in number one. And then, the, so what they've done is where, Di where Brother has Disney on the first page, um, Baby Lock put their exclusives here because you'll notice number two, very similar over here to what Brother's running. Number three is your fonts. Number four is your fancy fonts. Five is your shapes. So those are all the same. And where this has exclusive up here, this has Disney down there. So that side of it is pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty similar. And then of course, brother actually has pictures here. Now I'm really curious to see how different they are because I haven't really messed around with these much. Um, oops, nope, hit the wrong button. So you can see their selection of animals are probably a lot better. I don't think we've got anything like that in brother. But what you're gonna find is this is where the big difference is at, built-in designs. So if you're buying a machine for the built-in designs, that would be something very important to look at. The only, uh, off the top, Brother has Disney, and you can see here, I don't think that Brother has anything that's nearly as cool as that elephant from a elephant standpoint. <laughs> um, let's see, under our, uh, we have dogs and cats. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time <laughs> looking for other stuff. But like here on Brother, we have, those really nice designs. So that's your big difference. That's th that's really the only difference between these two machines is what they've got for patterns. You even come in, if you come into the um, design center, design center you're gonna see a few differences as well. They just lay it out a little bit different. The buttons are the same. Like up here they're saying create line, create fill image versus line illustration over here. Admittedly, I think this is a little bit more intuitive. The create line image versus create fill images makes more sense if you're first learning than line versus illustration. That's, but everything else, exactly the same. So that's the difference between Brother Baby Lock is the built-in patterns. Mechanically, they're gonna be the same inside. Um, mechanically, they're gonna be the same inside. Uh, you take the plastic off, they look identical. The only difference between them, if I had to repair one, if I had a board issue on a baby lock, I'd want to source a baby lock board because the main board is going to be different than the main board on a dream machine because of the built-in designs. Now my suspicion is if I put a dream machine board in a Destiny, it just makes that Destiny dream machine. I think the only difference is just going to be the software on the board because the hardware is identical on these. Um, but that's all I really wanted to get into today was just to show people that when you hear the internet rumors that Baby Lock and Brother are the same, they pretty much are. Like I said, the only real difference is the difference in the, in the built-in designs. And even some, there's some slight variations, like say in the design center and button labels, but functionally they'll be the same. So if you watch a lot of our videos for like a Luminaire and you're a Baby Lock and you own, I believe there's the Solaris, all of that translates over. It's all going to be the same. If you watch a Dream Machine video, it's going to be the same as a Destiny. If you see a Destiny tutorial on something really cool, that'll work on a Dream Machine. It's, it's, it, it all translates back and forth seamlessly because the only thing that's going to change is if you watch, like I said, we just did a Luminaire video on applique and the very first thing I do is select a pattern. That's not going to be in the same place on a, in a, on a Baby Lock Destiny, but the process and the things we cover are, are on a Baby Lock Solaris, but the process and the things we cover would be identical with how you go about doing it. It's just that initial starting pattern will be different because we used a built-in design. If you're downloading stuff from Kimberbell, 
I need a good design or any number of downloads, they're at the end of the day, if you're just going to download everything, there's fundamentally no difference between the machines. The, the big difference is the included patterns. Um, I think that's all I had. I know that it's kind of a quick day. We didn't have a, you normally go ramble on for an hour or so because Becky does way more interesting things than I do. So, so there's that. Um, but this is all we had today. Like I said, check our calendar out online. We've got a lot of really good stuff coming up. Um, and yeah, is that any, did I forget anything, Eddie? And keep an eye out for the Aurafil Thread Builder Club and the details to come out about. And I think I've also got a block of the month that we've got working in progress as well. On that note, completely unrelated, is if you did our block of the month from last year with the grunge, we got it done and it's hanging up. And I know if you come into the store and you see it, you're going to be like, I want to make that. And you can. We planned out last year's block of the month that if you see it now and you're like, I really wish I made that quilt, you can buy the blocks a month at a time and you can make that same quilt. So we do have a block of the month that's kind of a ongoing thing. So if it's something you're interested in, feel free to drop in. But we will be doing, I think it's Bijou from uh, Blank has a block of the month. We've got the fabric stuff. We just got to get it, finish getting it organized. But that'll be starting and you'll see pictures of that stuff too. Um... Do you think the quality of the plastic on the two, uh, on, are the same? Yes. I, I don't think there's really any difference in the um, injection molding process for the two. I, I, I'm not seeing that one is better than the other from a plastic standpoint. They, they seem to be, a, they're using the same properties. And I, I would suspect that the only difference is the molds that they're using. Because like I said, the, the baby lock, the buttons are shaped a little bit different. But yeah, I don't. When when I've worked on them, I have not noticed a difference in plastic. I mean, have you seen anything like that, Eddie? No. Yeah, quality-wise, and that's one of the things that I find interesting is when somebody says, "I had a baby lock, but I hated it, but I now have a brother and I love it," and they're very in their almost talking about identical models. Um, there might be a little bit of a je ne sais quoi to some machines, so you like one better than the other. But fundamentally, like I said, technically speaking, they should be pretty much identical. Um, if, if you're matching model to model, like I said, you got to do a little bit of research to find what the corresponding models are. And this isn't true for all of Baby Lock's machines. Like I said, Brother does not make all of Baby Lock's machines. Um, Baby Lock was very smart in what they did is where they kind of cherry picked the best of all worlds. Like people, most people know that Brother makes Baby Lock and Baby Lock surges are super expensive. They're like, I'm going to get a Brother serger. Brother does not make Baby Lock sergers. Baby Lock has a way better serger than what Brother. I, don't get me wrong, I like Brother, but the high-end serger, that's a baby lock thing. I think Juki makes it. I don't know for sure on that. Um, some of their some of their lower-end machines, I believe, Genomi is making. So if you're trying to find cross-comparisons, you're going to not find all of the Brother catalog. You're not going to find all of the baby lock in the Brother catalog. You're going to have to go to some other manufacturers. Um, um, and I'd have to see what the Jazz 2 is. Um if that's a brother version or not. Um, it's a good question. And some plastic portions, there could also have been a, a bad batch of plastic too. I wouldn't rule that out that in, in the manufacturing process. I had a thought that I just lost, Eddie. What was it? Brother versus Baby Lock. I completely just lost my, my train of thought. I do have two destinies. Um, I've got some maybes on them right now, but if you are interested in a destiny, let me know because I, sh I will know by the end of this week if I still have them available or not. And if I do, you can be on the wait list and we'll give you a call. Um, oh, that was what I was going to say. Now, the question that I will also get a lot of times, do I buy a brother or do I buy a baby lock? This is an interesting question to me. And what I will tell you when it comes to buying a high-end sewing machine, I'm not going to lie. I sell... I get trade-ins, I throw them on eBay, and I sell them. But if you're gonna drop, if you're gonna drop ten grand on a sewing machine, <coughs> I recommend using your local dealer if they're good. If they're pain in the butt, you, you know, don't reward bad behavior. I totally get that. But you are buying a very expensive piece of machinery, and you're gonna want support. You don't buy a brand new car at well, some people do, but I wouldn't buy a brand new car five states over. I'm going to buy a brand new car from my local dealer, so if something goes wrong, i got somebody I can yell at. Um, sewing machines are very similar. If your question is, do I buy a brother, do I buy a baby lock, and Disney's not important, or the software, that, or the inbuilt designs isn't important, 
I would recommend buying what you, from your, your closest dealer. If your baby lock dealer is closer, get a baby lock. If your brother dealer is closer, get a brother. If they're both kind of in the same, buy from the one you like best. Because what you're going to find is the after sale support is just as important as the sale itself on a lot of these machines. I don't see a lot go wrong with them, but you may run into issues. And the other thing is training. You're buying a new luminaire. You're looking at well, you know, 15000 up, you know, very expensive new machine. That's a very expensive piece of equipment to not know how to use. So I really recommend buying it from uh, somewhere that's going to support it and also train and all that. We do some online stuff and we really try to help with all that. But it's part of the reason uh, that you're paying that for a machine is because that dealer, that dealer is there to support you, back you up, and um, help you out. So that's the... Um, Um, so that's, when I get that question, brother, do I buy a brother or baby lock? I always say, what's your closest dealer and do you like them? Because if you don't like your dealer, it doesn't matter that they're close because you're never going to use them again. You're going to buy the machine and you're going to be peace out. Um, and that's fine. Um, it's been interesting doing the YouTube videos. I do get, um, messages from people all over the place now. We've done a couple tech videos and I've got people that are like, I've got a luminaire. I'm eight hours from my closest dealer. How do I fix this? And we're here to help. Do not hesitate to um, message. I would say message us on Facebook, and um, we'll get back to you on some of that tech support stuff. But that's kind of what we do because we, our, our thing is we support what we sell, but we also believe in brother. So we're also going to support brother. I don't care who calls me. I'll give you you know as much help as I can. You're going to find some, at some point that I'm going to be like you got to bring it to a dealer. Um, but that is pretty much all I have for machines. And Rhonda says she likes our videos on machines. Yes. We, actually, we should be doing more of this tech, honestly. This tech stuff does do well with the algorithms, but it's not nearly as much fun as some of the stuff Becky does, I'll be honest. I mean, yeah, machines are interesting, but if it's sewing and doing what it's supposed to, then who cares? Um, that's just me. Um... Get such a cold response. Yeah, you see... <laughs> <laughs> we got time to kill, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk for a little bit. Um, I find What I find fascinating, one thing to keep in mind is quilting and sewing is a hobby. There is nothing that I sell in this store that is a life essential. So when we get really bad um, weather and we close for the day, I don't feel bad because there's nothing here that you need to survive. Which is why I hear stories like um, what Lady Fair is saying that, you know, you go into some shops and they'll give you the time of day. If you ever come to this shop and we didn't acknowledge you because we were with another customer, I apologize. I try, we try to help everybody that comes through, but sometimes we're stuck and I have some people that will come in and just walk out and I really feel bad if we don't at least say hi. Um, but at the same time, I don't like to be rude to the person in front of us. It's really a, and it, it's, it's, it's really a hard balance to make sometimes. Um, but this is a hobby. It should be fun. The stores you go to should be having fun. If they're not having fun, <laughs> they're not doing something right. And... You should, I, I love, <laughs> Ronnie's eating and shaking her head, but this is, nobody gets rich at a quilt. I'm going to tell you right now, nobody's getting rich at a fabric store. Um, a machine store, you might be getting rich if you're in a good area and you're just selling machines, but a true quilting shop, unless you're franchising or you're some behemoth, some online behemoth, you're not really getting rich. You're getting paid, you're not starving, you can see that I don't starve, but I'm also not buying a second house on what we're making at, at the shop. We're having fun though. And I would, I would trade off, I would trade off a lot of, you know, I've had some jobs where I hated, I get up in the morning, I like to come here. I don't dread my day coming here, and that's, that to me is success. And if that's not coming through at the shop you stop at, then you need to have a, a come to Jesus moment. Be like, look, if you hate your job so much that you mean to customers, Maybe you should find a different job because this is supposed to be fun. <laughs> anyway, that's my rant about quilt stores. It's not like a, you know, there's some businesses out there. Like when you call up the oil, what's that? Yes. But like when you call up the, the, the oil company because you need heating oil for your home, they can be grouchy. Because everybody that's calling them is being grouchy because nobody wants to pay the price and they're like, I don't want to remember. There's other things they'd rather spend their money on. So I get that. But you're in a hobby. 
that's the, it's supposed to be fun. Um, questing. We could do quests. We should start quests, Rhonda. We could do, I fell down a rabbit hole. Have you seen that amusement park somewhere in Utah where they're like supposed to do like live quests? Anyway, tangent. But yeah, no, like I said, and, Ron, I, and I will admit sometimes our customer service may fall a little short with some of our remote customers as we get crazy here and anybody that knows me knows that I'm disorganized. I, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably putting it mildly. Um, so sometimes getting stuff shipped out when people have questions or we're trying to get parts and stuff, sometimes that gets lost in the shuffle. And I do apologize for that. But never feel bad for calling me up and be like, well, where the heck's my stuff? Doesn't hurt my feelings because I probably screwed it up. Um, but again, we're having fun. And I'm hoping that comes through in everything that we do. Because like I said, if we're not having fun, this is way too much work. Right, Eddie? Yeah. 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 Anything else I should cover? Not that I, I don't know why I went on that rant about shops being awesome, so I'm checking my watch. Oh, we have a half hour to kill still if we wanted to. But it's also, you know, holiday week. Um, We're not having a show next week, are we? Oh, we're doing a show next week? I'm out of town. We're going to do a show next week. Okay. We'll make it work without you. Yeah, Eddie's going out of town next week. He's going to go down to Florida. I'm going to be out of town the week after because I've my brother has decided that we're doing a road trip. Why, I don't I'm know. Gonna be here. What's that? I'm gonna be here. But Brenda's going to be here when I'm gone. But Eddie's not going to be here next week. But Brenda. we all love Eddie, but nobody cares if Eddie's not here. <laughs> I care when he's not here because there's a lot of stuff he does for me behind the scenes. But I don't know that the customers know how much he does for me. Um, but um, Brenda will be here when I'm out of town. Um, yes, Gene. Road trip midwinter. My brother was having a midlife crisis. I think he has one like every... August now when it's his birthday. It's an ongoing thing. Um, long story, some good stories there. But so he called me on his last one. And he's like, what are we doing for your birthday? I'm like, my birthday is not until January. He's like, I know. He said, but I'm postponing mine so we can do something fun. I'm like, let's do a road trip because we haven't done a road trip for a while. And then my dad's birthday is in December. So we decided that we're going to have a midwinter road trip, me and my brother and my dad. So then the question is, where are we going? For some reason... I am the adventure planner in the family. I don't know why. I really think a lot of my ideas are just stupid. But I'm also dumb enough to go do them. So I guess that makes that's where the fun comes from. So, if you want to do a mid-road trip, a midwinter road trip, and you're starting in, say, Twin Falls, Idaho, that's where I'm flying into, my brother's going to pick me up, we're going to go to Slab City, California. Slab City, Nevada. California. Slab City. It's on the California-Nevada border. If you know what I'm talking about, you'll understand why I want to go there. That's like anarchy. It's going to be fascinating. I, every, the first time I heard of this place, I was fascinated. I watched some YouTube videos. And I'm like, I got to check this place out. So that's going to be our final destination. But as with all road trips, the fun is in the travel, not just in the destination. So yeah, we're going to be pretty close to Texas, Rhonda. We're going to um, Southern Nevada. Slab City is an ab abandoned Air Force base, I believe. Um, and basically it's abandoned, and California doesn't want to clean it up. Nevada doesn't want to clean it up. And the feds just abandoned it. So it's kind of this no-man's land that has become like this mecca for RVers and anarchists. And it just looks fascinating. Any immigrants there? There's no water. There's no running water. There's no... <laughs> it's got all sorts of problems. But... Check it out. It's on YouTube. Slab City. It looks amazing. Um, some of the content's probably not safe for work because it is anarchist. Very anarchy, but it's good stuff. That's our final destination. What we're gonna there's like a giant sundial, a couple ghost towns. There's a bunch of stuff between Twin Falls and there that we're gonna check out. And Vegas is on the way. I don't think we're gonna spend a lot of time there because I'm not a big city fan, but I don't know. Maybe we'll stop and play slots and waste all our money. But my dad will be with us, and he's usually the voice of reason and talks us out of doing really dumb stuff. But he's getting a little more calm in his old age. We're able to talk him into more. Um, anyway, that was a complete side note. Um, and I'll, what I'll try to do is send some dispatches from the road for that road trip, too, so you can all see the excitement. There's the big Love Jesus sign. Yes, the Sanctuary Rock. Is it Sanctuary Rock? Yeah. Yes. That, that is love? Yes, that's, that's what it's most famous for. And you can... Best believe that there will be a selfie in front of that with me and the gang. Yes. So anyway, now that I've 
bored you all to death with all sorts of randomness. Um, keep smiling, keep sewing, sew on, and be excellent to each other. <laughs>